today in O'Shea's Hotel, and we're really grateful to our sponsor for continuing to sponsor Al Pacino from Back Road Smokers Club. Cal, you're very welcome to this program. Thank you. So this this going to be a relatively informal but detailed podcast at the same time, and uh, we hope you're not too nervous. We hope that you're feeling good. <laughs> we won't ask anything too personal. And um, I'm going to kick it off by asking you a little bit about Back Road Smokers Club. So your band has pretty much exploded in the southeast over the past two years. So could you tell me how was your band formed? Because I mean. We often see that, you know, somebody sets it up like a manager or you decide you're going to form it for a singing competition or a talent show. So were you friends beforehand or how did this all come about? Um, I think going back, me and Freddie uh, were friends a long time from a theatre group that we were in together called Little Red Kettle, mm. a local Waterford theatre group. Uh, he was... Um, Actually, Killian Brown was in that as well. So me and Killian were in that together mm -hmm. uh, at about 10 or 11 years old. So we were friends since then. Um, Freddie was a bit older than us. I think he was about 15, 16. We always shared an interest in music and some other same things. Um, a lot of heavy metal, actually. Um, and me and Freddie be really into the heavy metal. Uh, Killian... I'd say he'd enjoy it, probably not as much, uh, <laughs> a little bit like, you know, the kind of classical metal stuff, but um, we, we weren't really listening to much of it back then, mm -hmm. um, and then we only got together, I think, uh, it's about four years ago now, um, uh, Freddie just gave me a call, and said, do you want to come down and play some bass, um, I went down for a jam, we ended up having a gig like seven days later. Uh, just doing all covers, all classic rock and roll. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people showed up, so we just we, we decided to make a thing of it. Mm -hmm. you know? And when did Killian and Chez join? Um, Chez was there the first time I okay. was there. Uh, Killian was recruited maybe five months later, mm -hmm. uh, five months after forming. Mm -hmm. uh, we met him, uh, it was through through some spree project or mm -hmm. summer uh, music project yeah. me, Chez, Killian were involved in. I ended up not actually being involved in it at the end, uh, but Chez and Killian uh, got connected, uh, talking, asked them to come for a jam, <coughs> and it was a great success. So mm -hmm. he was in it from, you know, pretty much since the start as well, you know, from about five months in. Mm -hmm. We already kind of had the songs, whatever we had written, uh, ready to teach to him and then kind of you know work from there so who were some of your uh, musical inspirations growing up I know you mentioned heavy metal and classic rock but anybody specifically um, there's so many I mean music was just uh, a day and night every single day of the week yeah. uh, uh, non-stop sort of thing yeah. uh, I was influenced from uh, a lot of I think uh, I kind of got into heavy rock first of all. Mm -hmm. um, really was into System of a Down, okay. um, Metallica, Pantera were my favorite awesome. heavy metal band. Then I kind of got more into, I don't know, from that just really found an interest in guitar styles of all yeah. types of music. From what I liked about the heavy metal was the guitar, you know? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was what I really kind of connected with. And then, um, you know, learning guitar more mm -hmm. and more. And then uh, it was really, I think, I went to secondary school in De La Salle. Yeah. There was a lot of, um, there was a lot of good musical influences in there. Yeah, I, mean, um, I went too, like, you know, like yeah. the brother band and everything. That's it. Yeah, there's a good musical society mm -hmm. there. You know, people in my class had a good taste in music. Yeah, yeah. Brother Ben obviously has a uh, great taste in music. Mm -hmm. he, um, he composes wonderful music, yeah. actually. Um, he brings on people really well, you know. He yeah, he does. Shell and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a serious dude. Really nice mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you talked about um, the different styles of music that you're interested to and Freddie's interested to, Killian adds something a little bit different because it's more kind of jazzy, right? So yeah. I was listening to uh, Getting On with It, the one you did with Susan O'Neill recently. Yeah. So. How would you describe the type of music that you play to people who've never heard of Backroad Smokers Club before? What's the genre? I'm not really sure. Yeah. I think you just gotta listen to it. Uh, we've been called funk, rock, uh, acid jazz. Um, I, there's uh, there's hip hop influences. Uh, I don't know. There's kind of disco-y sort of. It's 60s, 70s. 
I'm not really sure. Mm. Um, you just kind of gotta listen to it and make it up. Uh, make up your own mind yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, what if I ask the same question? I mean, how would you describe it? Like um, I would say, like a cross between opinion. jazz and rock. Mm-hmm. Okay. Am I qualified to say it? I think yeah, I think course. Freddie brings so, a jazz really and rock. Or, like if, <laughs> if that's what you're hearing coming <laughs> through, I think Freddie bring, brings a really like bluesy type of voice mm. to it. I think you, we would have a really good voice for blues. Bluesy, mm. raspy, I think yeah. I think raspy, really yeah. really bluesy. Mm. Yeah, uh, Ches loves the blues, like blues guitar. Mm. He's uh, he's always been yeah, about that. Or yeah, bringing really bluesy solos. Like you know, um, I think blues is definitely in there. Like so, go going back then to like four years ago when this loose group of people with talent who knew each other from Red Cat started yeah. forming this band who came up with the name for the band and what what were you trying to do were you just experimenting were you like we're gonna have a number one album what's what was going on um i don't think um i don't think we had sometimes the plan may start out unclear mm. you have a really rough plan don't mm. know where you want to take it and maybe it becomes more and more clear through time mm-hmm. um i think our first intentions were just to get together um play some music that people were gonna dance to like you know some some live music we got into writing music we wanted to write a song so we, we you know we i had a song or two chess had a song or two mm. uh, bits and pieces we started working together and songs just sort of naturally started coming together so was it a know? band or was it just more jam what was um what was it like it was Actually, in the early days, we, we, we did get a lot of gigs, uh, despite the little practice that we did. Uh, we ended up uh, rocking up in all sorts of different places, um, around Tremor and Waterford, playing um, God knows what, um, just uh, covers, uh, originals that we had, you know, just started to work on that weren't really developed at all. So it was really just about having fun, being in a band, um, seeing what we could get away with. Mm. with what we had and uh, <clears throat> the more and more we did that then kind of just like uh jumping in the deep end you know uh seeing seeing what happens write music mm. uh, get some music recorded get that out uh just i don't know uh, have fun with it and what about the name i mean queen and coldplay had names before they became queen and coldplay yeah so did you have any other names and who came up with the name of the band uh the original practice space was bank lane uh, in Waterford City, yeah. and it used to be called Bank Lane Smokers Club. Oh, but uh, that was only for maybe a day or two, mm. and then uh, I can't remember. It was back and forth. I didn't contribute to the name. I think it may have been between Freddie <laughs> Ches, uh, the original drummer, Darren Dwyer, who's a drummer of Chrome Yellow now. Mm. Chrome Yellow is an equally uh, good band name. I really like that name, mm. Chrome Yellow. <laughs> been, around, been around for a while as well. Like this yeah. is, some of their, remember this some of their stuff maybe three or four years, years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But they take the H out of Chrome to make it a bit Chrome. different. So C O R O N E. Yeah, that's mm. interesting. Mm. Yeah. And so, how would you I describe like how would you describe the local music scene in Waterford? So, um, do you think that other artists are supportive of each other, or because I mean sometimes when we think of the arts, it can be a bit clicky. So yeah, how, I don't how think. Do you think it is in Waterford. I think. Waterford's a fun place. Um, people are kind-hearted people. Um, I think they are supportive of each other. Um, the arts is notorious for being quite clicky, mm. but I think in music, it's um, well the people that play the music that we play like it's more about fun, you know. It's more mm. about uh, support and uh, enjoyment. So I think there is a there is a lot of good support. Mm-hmm. Um, for, you know, for from musician to musician and just from music fan to uh, the bands they support, you know, like they'll always go out and see it. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the, I know you're still on the up and up, but what are some of the challenges that you face trying to get your music out there, like on the radio and stuff like that, and trying to expand beyond like the, the realms of Ireland? Um, I think we the recordings we got were maybe a little bit kind of limited in quality you know uh the we we really got some demos done and, mm. and gave them to um to like wlr fm yeah, yeah. and beat yeah. and stuff and uh, open tempo actually plays it uh, quite a bit i really uh, play some mm. of our songs but um they weren't really of a high enough standard just from our own uh recording 
you know, for a professional enough sound uh, yeah, to have yeah, a, yeah. a huge radio, um, you know. Yeah. Mm. And then with, impact, with the lineup of Backroad Smokers Club, you were saying about how um, Gillian was there and Chez was there and Freddie was there. It's not the original lineup though, because of the changing of drummers over time. Yeah. So how did you find how did you find transitioning and finding new people to come in and working with that? How was that? Because I'm um, sure it was a challenge. Like. It was definitely challenging. Really interesting. Um, you're just. Uh, I mean the the drums are the backbone of mm. uh, of a band. So you're really different drummers bring very different uh, flavors. Mm. You know, uh, some are lighter, some are heavier. Uh, some are faster, some are slower, you know, um, what they're going to naturally do, how they're going to perceive the song uh, with their ears and turn it into, you know, write the drum part for that song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting. Um, Connor Walsh is who we got now. He's a very intuitive player. He plays a lot of different instruments, you know, he's a... Good guitar player as well. Connor. Yeah, he is, you know, he's a, he's a well-rounded uh, musician, so he's he's... He would try out different uh, possibilities, yeah. you know, when he's when he's making the drum tracks up for songs, you know, he'll try out different avenues, see um, what sounds good, where, you know, mm-hmm. um, he's been really good for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's what you need from a drummer. And when you work with these people on, you know, such a close level, you're making music together, it's a yeah. pretty special thing. It is. Do you consider them to be friends, brothers, or is it very professional? How does it work with your band? Um, I guess there's a there's gotta be a level of uh, camaraderie, you know. Uh, they're making music together. Um, you gotta kind of, I mean, if if people didn't have the same intentions as me for doing something as serious as making music or performing live uh, continuously, mm-hmm. um. You know, uh, I wouldn't be able to. I'd only, you know, I have to be working with people that are on the same page as me, you know, and uh, th- I think that's the same with everyone, or, or you're gonna, you know, you're not gonna succeed unless you're working with like minded people, you know, that are doing the same thing as you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, just going back to um, musical influences, Cal, would you have a lot of hip hop influences? Because I know I've seen you perform solo a few times and. Uh, I think last year you were up on stage somewhere and uh, you were doing it's a lot of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're with the band, obviously it's not um, mm. it's not hip hop per se. Um. Yeah, I love hip hop. Um. I would have been influenced from hip hop music from a young age. Uh, listening to a lot from around the world. Um, most. Uh, recorded hip hop history would be from America mm. from the seventies and eighties, yeah. but. Um, you know, now it's a worldwide thing. Um, you hear it from all over the world, uh, different influences. I, I would say uh, Back Row Smokers Club has a, a small bit of yeah, influence, yeah. maybe just in, uh, in, in lyrical content, but it's not all like uh, raps and there's not someone like mm. scratching with, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, with the turntables. But, um, but that would be cool though, you know, we would be open to that. Like uh, hip hop is definitely um it's definitely a huge influence on me, yeah. Well, do, do you think um, the Irish scene is going in the right direction? Um, well, I mean the I feel like today's world everything is going in every direction, you know. So yeah. there's there's some that is going in the right direction and some that's going in the opposite direction, yeah. you know? Um it's all uh, down to what your own taste is, really, you know, what, what you're going to listen to yourself. But I think there is a lot of people, list- there's more people than ever listening to Irish hip hop and enjoying yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and going to shows, there's a lot of um, hip hop international acts coming to Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, even I've seen a lot of uh, UK grime, which mm-hmm. is its own little different branch of hip hop, you know. Um, a lot coming to Dublin and Cork and the likes. Yeah. So uh, there, there is a huge interest. I think there is a huge interest in hip hop, even at Irish festivals. You know, mm-hmm. like good, yeah, um, of course, yeah. uh, big names in hip hop. Yeah. You know, and do you think we're in like the golden era of hip hop at the minute? 
Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think you. When do you when do you think current, it peaked? The current time the golden year. Or has it peaked yet? I'd say my favorite year in hip hop is. Um, probably nineteen ninety six, the year of my birth. Yeah. A lot of other people would say that was. Um, the earlier than that, you know, I have gotten a lot into eighties hip hop as well. Yeah, like that yeah. is so, sort of like, that is what some people would, would. Mm. Call the golden year, you know. Yeah, the like Sibeni. Um, mm. So yeah, no. Today, today, I don't think. How do you compete then? Since you, it, I think it's fair to say, Backroom Smokers Club isn't grime. Yeah, no, it's not grime. So <laughs> you're not SoundCloud, right? So no, how, I'm not SoundCloud. How do you compete with all these different <laughs> genres that are out there? Because you have something to sell, which is your talent. So how do you compete with something like that in mm. an era now when like? 20 year olds 21 year olds 22 year olds all they're listening to is often hip hop from the US so how do you compete with that um I don't think that as when you asked before what type of music it is and I wasn't mm. even really sure uh it's not grind though like we're yeah but yeah I can say that's not grind <laughs> um we we're, we're not really you know we're just making what we're making so we're not really competing with yeah uh, anyone in particular you know we don't mm-hmm. have anyone that we aspire to be doing better than by a certain time or anything you know we're just sort of on our own path i guess so um other genres um you know people are gonna have an interest in them mm-hmm. uh, people um get an interest for us uh that's you know that's good for us uh mm-hmm. helps us grow uh helps them um, they they have some new music to listen to, uh, we want to make more new music, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it it just sort of grows organically and naturally like that. I don't mm-hmm. think, uh, it, like, it's not really as competitive, mm-hmm. you know. As, so on a uh, local level, you have no rivals, say. No. Okay. Oh, so yeah. with with your music, um, you like your music, right? Yeah. Would you course. say it's good? Uh, yeah, I agree. Right. So, so, so it's good. It's one good. one of the things that uh, Lennon said was yeah. that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Yeah. yeah so yeah. do you think that your music is the best music that's come out of Waterford in the last couple of years? Okay. If you like your music, do you think it's the best that's come out of Waterford? I can't say oh. uh, that it's the best. Um, I would say... There's the I mean if we're talking about electronic music, house and techno music, uh, which we haven't talked about yet. Mm-hmm. There's a whole other world mm-hmm. of Waterford artists that are bringing out music that yeah. I I would deem as the best overall music okay. being released in Waterford mm-hmm. from the likes of Between Ourselves, um, different um, different producers, um. So Backroad Smokers Club, I think. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think the best. I don't think the best music. I think. Uh, I think it's contributed to the pool of uh, good music mm-hmm. that we've been uh, lucky enough to have mm. in the last, maybe. See, I think when I was much younger, and even probably before I was born, it was really, really good crack. Mm-hmm. Then it was kind of dead for a while. Mm-hmm. So. We kind of formed a band at a lucky time, right? Uh, when uh, people started getting more of an interest in music again, you know, and there's, I think there's a there's a huge surge in interest in music. But for yeah. for Especially your Waterford music, yeah. for your genre yeah. in Waterford, would you say that you're up there with the best in your genre right now? But I don't know what our genre is, you know. Mm, good so answer. Mm-hmm. If we're playing in our own style of music, our own original genre that we don't know what to call. Mm-hmm. I think we're the only ones playing that. So mm. I guess we're the best uh, in our own single category, <laughs> you know, which I'm not sure <laughs> what it really is, you know, mm. but I can't say like, uh, like, there's not, like, I, I'd like to hear more of the kind of music we're making. I'd like to hear yeah. more um, funky music. <coughs> there, there is, there is brilliant musicians around, you know, mm, of and, course. Uh, um, I think there's there's a lot I don't get to hear enough of, mm. you know, um, like uh, you know some great guitarists out there, great bassists, um, that um, 
that maybe haven't found bands that work yet or found you know formed um uh, companionships with the right musicians um to be seeing them all the time you mm. know but um you see them here and there and i guess they're coming mm. yeah you know everyone that we haven't heard of yet is working on music right now you know mm. and what do you make of the state of modern music in general at the minute like the the likes of in my opinion stuff here on the radio apart from your stuff obviously is tough listening you know like the charts and stuff um and worrying stuff. yeah yeah it's, it's worrying it is quite worrying um very very crude you know mm-hmm. very uh very sort of uh, weird at times. I think there's a lot of music. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of music that's not much thought goes into. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, there's a lot to be said stuff. for music that's actually made by real people. people. You know? And I mean, well, I think maybe the music you're talking about, a lot of thought goes into it, but it just may not be the right thought. It may not be. Yeah. It may not be the thought that this music is going to be for the greater good. Yeah. You know, it may be more so that this music is like a product for monetary profit yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know uh, that's going to gonna be forced onto the radio mm-hmm. that's pretty much going to buy its way onto the radio exactly. to just then accumulate money you know mm-hmm. it's uh, it's strange how it's kind of going but there is like because I've never listened to it when, I, when it is on yeah. I don't even mind it you know yeah. uh, like some uh uh, some real kind of uh, chart radio. Yeah. Uh, the odd few like I don't mind. I'm yeah, kind of yeah, listening. Yeah. I'm like I can see why that's getting the billion hits. I'd be like, the same. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I I wouldn't discredit it at all. You know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, I think it's good to keep an eye on the music. Uh, like there's so much coming out. Uh, oh, as you were saying, you know, like mm-hmm. there is actually so much music being released. It's good to uh, keep an eye on the. Uh, both sides, you know, the yeah. stuff that you like and the stuff that you don't like. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because, uh, um, yeah, it is going in a weird place. And when you uh, when you say going, when you say, like, that the music might not be for the greater good, yeah. do you think, are you referring to, like, um, drug use in songs or treatment of women? What exactly are you referring to? Um, definitely those two things among many others. Mm. Um, just... Like music that's more so. It's it, it it doesn't have in mind like, to make the listener feel good as soon as they hear it. Mm. It's more so, uh, uh, purpose music, mm. uh, for uh, for for probably bad purpose, you know, mm. um, like, some club music is great, uh, like I love. I love techno and I do love those uh, trap beats and stuff as well like you know they're really heavy kind of um, uh, sort of modern hip hop sound like I enjoy them but sometimes the the lyrics and stuff yeah they are quite um, they, they're just uh, too much yeah they're just not so wholesome like, you know. so what, do you, what specifically would bother you is it is it talking about using drugs because we hear that all the time in songs now yeah popping Xanax all the time or calling women bitch or hoe or anything like this yeah, is that yeah. what bothers you um yeah well i guess that does bother me there is a lot of uh there is a lot of talk of um of uh serious prescription pills abuse going on over there there's actually a rapper called Lil Zan. Mm-hmm. Any, anybody know Lil Zan? Mm-hmm. yeah they're yeah, all, just, they're all <laughs> just like and then he's off the, he's off the Xanax now yeah, he's, he's changed his name though he's just changed his name to his real name Pedro did he? yeah which I think is kind of yeah, that's, that's good yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit better than Lil <laughs> Zan like. mm. um, yeah you know I think um, you think we should censor the song or censor the words no, you see, I don't think we should censor it either. Like, it, it's weird because, like, uh, it, it's present in music today, uh, but it, listening back, it kind of always was. So, mm. it's it's weird. Um, I, I just kind of look at things from more, <laughs> like, as a lyricist, I, mm. I, I look at things, uh, uh, the, the, like, the meaning behind something, like, why, why something is written, uh, like, why would you like okay maybe if you're if you're off your head on xanax you're gonna find nothing else to talk about other than that but 
Do you know, like, why, why would you? You know, what are your, what are your intentions for making music? Like, I look at people's intentions for, mm. well, for everything, but obviously for making music. You know, mm. if you're listening to someone and their name alone is Lil Zan, you're kind of like, okay, you know, like, a, you, I wouldn't be drawn into some, you know, listening mm. to something. So, did like you have that. to? You mentioned before that you like to rap from '96, and from that sort of time frame. You know, they weren't talking about uh, using drums and stuff, but they were also talking about selling drums. Mm. Uh, yeah, so they were still, they you, were using and selling drugs. Would you, yeah, would you still share that opinion then? That, like, you, you don't find today's rap wholesome. Would you say the same about before? Yeah, I actually kind of would say the same about before. A lot of it is, um, but it's more so... Okay, it's, it's crafted better because it's like storytelling about... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it may be even uh, bending the truth or exaggerating the truth a little bit um, for the sake of, you know, dramatizing the scene. Yeah, uh, course, that's yeah. what that's what hip hop is, you know, it's a kind of show mm-hmm. um, or a story. But uh, I think they were just, you know, when, it, when a story is being told well and when a story is being told pretty so poorly you know yeah. mm-hmm. when they're just repeating the same word over and over again like yeah. where's the story you know uh <laughs> there's no story like yeah. it just pretty much ends there like you know yeah. but older hip-hop and, and not even just older hip-hop i think uh, you know there is there is good storytellers from from today and what times. what do you think about the recent stories about people wanting um fairy tale of new york to be taken off the air or baby it's cold outside what that's a really that? good question i was actually um i was gonna do i, I do a christmas video every year i didn't mm. do one this year um i actually left it off but um i was going to ironically mm. uh do fairy tale of new york i didn't bother doing it but um uh, just to kind of stir a bit of controversy mm. I, I feel like the, the the reason that song is banned is uh is is for the wrong reason you know and that is infringing on uh not just uh freedom of speech but uh the art of storytelling itself mm. um a character in a so uh, well both characters it's a it's a it's a story with two characters mm. uh both characters use some unsavory language about each right. other yeah um. It's not, I don't think it's a, 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 a derogatory or a homophobic song. Mm. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that it should be viewed as one mm-hmm. because a character in a song mm-hmm. uses a, a homophobic slur. Yeah, or, uh, you know, there, there, there's, other, uh, there's other profane language in it as well uh, towards women, mm. which I'm sure is, uh, you know... Okay, maybe it shouldn't be on the radio, but uh, it always was. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, it's a tricky one. Mm. Um, like, it's kind of like it always was there, so why you bring it up now? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's because the world is changing, I suppose. This is just a different world, you know. They're going after um, Huckleberry Finn for the N word, you know. Mm. Uh, Father Christmas, they wanted to uh, de genderize him, you know. Who is they? Uh, Who is they? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, just today's world, just the the people of today's do you world. Think, do you think there's like a snowflakeism out there? Do you think? Snowflakeism. That's funny. I guess I wouldn't call it that, but maybe they're like. Mm. I I know what you mean by that. Right. People get, <laughs> you people know getting mean? offended, but yeah, it's yeah. very easily. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't agree with me? Because I well, think calling for Father Christmas to be gender. No, I, I do. I do. Hard. I do agree with you, but I wouldn't call it snowflakeism. Mm. You know. Uh, Oversensitivity uh, yeah, yeah. to. I don't want to insult anybody by calling them a snowflake, either. Do you? you don't want it's to too much of a fear of offending people. Yeah, yeah offending people. Not yeah. that I'm afraid of offending snowflakes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but um, uh, like I'm, I'm not afraid to offend them, but uh, I will. I don't want to intentionally. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you wouldn't. You wouldn't call them that word. Really. Uh, if someone was being a snowflake, nah, like just no. let him be a snowflake. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, I, I I don't want to. Like, people are fearful to offend each other, definitely. Right. Uh, but at the same time, though, we live in a world where people are not like it. it it's gone to both extremes. Mm. You know, uh, uh, Donald Trump, the leader of the free world at the moment, uh, 
he he's not afraid to offend. He he's offending people mm. all the time, you know. So how would you feel if? Uh, and he doesn't care. So but let's say you got let's say you got a message, right? So this is about whether you care or not. Now, okay. Say you get a message on Facebook from somebody you've yeah. never heard of them before. Okay. Right? And they say, "I've just listened to your latest song and I'm really offended by it." Okay. And they give you a reason why they're offended, <laughs> right? Mm. I don't know. You say you're gonna hold hold someone's hand or something. Okay. Know. And they say, "You know what, Cal? I'm really offended by this. I want you to take down the song." What okay. would, What would your response be? Do you think? Um. I don't know, I guess it'd be, uh, it'd be hard to understand, you know, uh, like everything, you can be offended, uh, like it doesn't mean, mm. it's not the end of the world to be offended, you know, uh, like uh, a smell can offend you, you know, like you can't, you mm. can't go uh, protest against the smell, you know, like it's just, uh you got a little bit offended like you know it's just uh it's it's a natural emotion i don't think it's the end of the world like you know uh so if my music offended somebody maybe it already has like uh you know uh, i i haven't actually i haven't actually heard of anyone say that yet uh well actually one time uh the backo smokers club were playing in dublin we uh uh our, our music was offending an old lady and she was really like vocal about it she was just because like, of the upbeatness of it or just like the content or i don't know what we were playing i think we were actually playing something fairly chilled out and she was just hating it like um she just was just like, no. the music then, she right? just wanted it to stop right away like, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I guess i guess we just apologized we just said look we can't stop you know we're here to uh to play to people that want to hear it like i think yeah, like, that was a good question, man. You, okay, it's after taking a long time, but this is the answer I'm after landing at. Mm. Um, like, you're making music for somebody that's going to want it, you know? Mm. So that may offend somebody else. And there may even be cases where it offends more people than people that enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But you're only making it for the people that enjoy it, so... Mm. Uh, you know, I think everyone can just kind of get off your back, like, mm. and just, just leave you do it, leave you do what you're going to do, like, Good answer. you know, Good answer. I think, like, okay, like, Donald Trump offends me so much that I just tune out of it, because yeah. I'm like, if, if I watch the news, I'm going to, I'm going to actually feel personally violated, right. and my mood is going to be affected, so I, 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 I kind of just zone out of it, mm. you know, if, uh, if, if, if something I know is going to offend me, like if there's a, if there's a street where a man is like, uh, every time I walk out, he's shouting at me like, oh, he's going to offend me. Like, I'm just going to like veer away from that. I'm not going to go up and approach him and say, you know what? Everything you're doing is offending me. <laughs> and, and see, and see if he wants to come around to change his, uh, you know, to change his actions because mm. it offended me and I'm letting him know, you know, I don't, I don't think that's really, I think it's just better to just kind of uh, avoid what offends you, mm. you know, try not to be offended too easily. Um, it, it, it is a mean world out there. There's going to there's gonna be things that are going to offend everyone, you mm. know, because everyone believes something. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, there's somebody else that believes the opposite. Right. So your you, conflict of, of ideas is going to be inevitable. You know, you've got to learn to deal with that maturely. Mm -hmm. So in your band then, um, and people are dealing with it maturely. But in people your, are losing their shit. Like, in your band, snowflake. You have so many people that are very very talented. Yeah. So how do you deal with <laughs> conflict in the group when I don't know somebody says, "Oh, I want to write this song, or I want to play this, or we should play this this night." How do you deal um, with when there's creative conflict? Because uh, surely in a band there's going to be conflict, right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There's uh, creative conflict, or I think. Um, you gotta you, you gotta sort of decide what sounds best for the band you know like everyone as an individual has got to sort of think what like um because when we're playing as a band people are perceiving us as individuals it's more so they're perceiving you as the band so mm, as what's one. yeah exactly What's going to sound better for that one? What's mm. going to put that one at the highest um, uh, level of 
of quality. Mm. Um, so uh, there's been songs that I've written that I don't personally enjoy that some people have said was their favorite song mm. that we never recorded, that we never played. Um, and I would have thought of that as as such a weak song that we should dismiss it forever. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's it's not one that we have any interest in playing. You know, and there could be other ones, um, like even from my own music that I create. Like you know, you're gonna have uh, ones that you like less. Mm. You know, um, that other people like more, and uh, ones that there's been loads of cases of ones that I uh, liked or. Uh, kind of wacky or weird ideas that I had mm. that uh, that didn't work for the overall sound of the band, you know. Mm. That was kind of in the early days. I think um, I think we sort of switched around now. Like our creative differences, uh, and and creative uh, likenesses are always changing. Mm, you know that so, uh, a mad stunt that I would have thought was a good idea, like two or three years ago mm. that I wouldn't think it'd be good to do now, mm. uh, Ches might think it'd be a great idea. And I'd be the one telling him uh, that's not that's not such a good mm. idea, you know? And um, I guess the same, that. you know, with uh, you, you want to kind of um, bridge between uh, simplicity and complexity, you know? Uh, mm. You don't want your music to just be too boring and dull. Mm. Then again, you don't want it to be too... Um, uh, too kind of hectic. Or I guess that's always the way though. With, like, with like a group effort though, because yeah. I mean, even with our podcast, it's a group, mm. and mm. sometimes Gavin will come up with ideas, or I'll come up with ideas, or James will come up with and ideas. Creative conflict, and we agree and disagree on or things or whatever. So, isn't yeah. would you say it's normal as part of like a group effort that that happens? Yeah, I think it it has to happen. You know, um, to get to. To to get to the greater good, and mm. for everyone to really have their impact. You know, it's got to be an equal effort. Yeah. But some bands are not. Some bands are, um, uh, Arctic Monkeys, for instance. Yeah. Uh, the 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 lead singer would uh, would write the songs only, you know, and then and then give it to the band, and he'd be credited for writing all of it, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, Alex Turner wrote the whole Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino album, like, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. recorded the whole thing himself. Yeah, it's yeah. a weird album, but I love See, it. See, I didn't even know that. I yeah. must listen to more, man. I mm. must listen to more of that. But, um, yeah, you know, so I think our band is mostly a... a it's a, a collective sort of creation, you know? So we're all about some ideas off each other mm. and just sort of saying, like... It's kind of like you just have an idea and then if, if it gets more yeses than no's, you know what I mean? Mm. Gets the go-ahead then. And if, if you... Uh, if it gets more no's than yeses, doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen. You know. So, would uh, you think that music would be um, a higher revelation than, say, philosophy? Uh, I think they're they're one and of the same. Okay. In what way? Um. Because you know, a lot a lot of people have read a lot of philosophy, and then it's kind of like mind blowing stuff to them. It's like stuff stuff they would never think about. Yeah. And then, do you think people, when they listen to music, they'll have the same mindset? I think music is like a... Or it, mu- music is both a science and an art, you know? Music is a philosophy, it's a way of life, it's a, perhaps even a means to enlightenment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, blows my mind, anyway, mm-hmm. um, as does philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it's just like, it's it's the biggest thing ever, like, mm. you know, it's it's, it's it? yeah, it's it's there, mm. it's there from the dawn of time, like with food, you know what I mean? Mm. It's there with food and shelter, like, music was just always there, yeah. mm. um, uh, in the in the human species. Mm. Mm. I think it's crazy how much music has evolved even over the past maybe fifty years. I mean, you look back on like the likes of the Beatles and the Beach Boys. I mean, the, the use of electronics wasn't there mm. and then you look at the music of today as I mentioned the charts earlier it's all electronic you know what I mean mm. like obviously electronic music is electronic um, yeah it's cra- really crazy how much music has evolved over like the past 50 years when before that you go back to 
mm. the likes of Camptown Races, you know that song, it's mm-hmm. like how many years old, like a couple hundred years old. Yeah. Uh, the music of, like you could look up videos on YouTube, like the... Baroque era. Yeah, like, like the hits of whatever, mm. whatever year, you know, I, I just think it's crazy. Mm. The, yeah. How much the world even itself has evolved. And even, you know, in this evolution of music, I mean, you have to ask yourself, actually, you have to ask yourself this. How many year? How many years have you been officially a group for? Three, four years. Um, it's actually. It'll be four years in about seven days. Okay. Happy, nice. happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, I think that'll be, on about the fifteenth. Mm. That's not exactly right though. I, I can't. Mm. I can't. Exactly so you, you, you as a band think have evolved over time in such a short space as well. Do you still enjoy this? philosophical scientific journey as much as you did when you started uh yeah more so than ever i think um I, i've learned so much through uh through being in it mm. um i'm just sort of continuing to learn continuing to sort of grow with it do mm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. um it's sort of just a a project that's always that's always there that's always being built on and it's mm-hmm. always kind of being contributed to do you know mm-hmm. What is, what is, what's the future of the band? Do you have an album planned or what, where are we going? We don't have a, we don't have the studio booked. We have a album worth of material, perhaps an album and a bit worth of material there that's uh, unrecorded, um, just uh, ready for uh, practicing and uh, perfecting, uh, get it done and um, get it up there soon. Uh, out into the world mm. I'm not sure um, how long it's going to be hopefully in the near future like uh, we are working towards it mm. um, new recordings new videos um, you know new gigs uh, where we where we want to be playing mm-hmm. um, different cities around Ireland mm-hmm. um, yeah I think um, it's all uh, common, I guess, when Freddie gets back from India. He's over in India f- uh, for about, I think, three or four months. Mm. He'll be back uh, any day now. Sounds like something from, <laughs> I don't know sounds like something from the Beatles, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like when George Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll have an Indian influence in your new music? Um, I, I wouldn't mind it. I love the tabla drum. Uh-huh. Mm. Do you know the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. really deep sound drum? I love that. I love Indian music. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd, I'd really be open to that actually <laughs> just on the topic of that do you think that you would ever stray from the sound that's synonymous with you now whatever you want to call it mm. do you think that there would ever be a change down the line of, of what your sound is um, I think it's it's changed already yeah. uh, in, in, in only a short time like uh, how it sounded four years ago um, was a lot it was heavier it was probably uh, di- different things happened differently you know what I mean it was yeah. heavier it was kind of looser um, now it's more we're, we're, we're trying to make it a little bit more polished you know Yeah. even though I guess our initial style was a little bit sort of like uh, rough and ready yeah. um, it's, it's sort of we're, we're, we're trying to you know, do what only works best now. Yeah. yeah. You know, as as I was discussing, mm. um, trying to, just uh, work like that. You know. What have the highlights been over the last couple of years? Is there a particular moment that stands out, or a particular gig that you played that really stands out where you think we really fucking nailed that? I think, um, uh, I don't know. I I'd always have positives and negatives after every gig. You know, um. Uh, it's a good gig if the positives outweigh the negatives, you know, which is, mm-hmm. and most of the time you know you have a few bad ones in as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, I think uh, highlights were going to Germany was pretty nice. Um, hmm, uh, a few beach parties have been really beautiful. Mm-hmm. That are you know um, like a, a pub setting in, in a cool pub or a mu- music venue like is great. But um, you know you can't be a natural setting like a, mm. a natural setting is a beautiful place to play. Mm. Um, I've never played in a well, I suppose. Um, festivals. Um, body and soul was great. Um, electric picnic, the last electric picnic I think was a really big highlight. Mm. Mm. Um, that was um, we were playing on the Saturday and the Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was a really good all crack. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what else over this summer? They they be the main ones. I think yeah, the the last electric picnic just gone uh, a few times to Germany mm. would be like the best the best crack I ever had with the band, mm-hmm. as, as well as probably the best gigs. But maybe, yeah, I think they were, you know, the, the best uh, received gigs. Taylor Oil was a great laugh. Yeah. I played, we were, um, we were all there, actually. it was really... Um, was that the one with Propeller Pounds? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was a yeah. It was a really good gig. I was actually playing um, both, uh, I was playing November the 30th, uh, 2017, because it only popped up on my Facebook memories, mm. um, that uh, that gig, uh, the Propeller Palms gig uh, with Backo Smokers Club, and then I was opening for uh, Toucan mm. uh, November the 30th, just mm. gone, um, as myself. Mm. And uh, it was just mad. I didn't know that it had aligned like that, that mm-hmm. it was uh, it, it, in the same place on the exact same day two times in a year. That's mad. That's <laughs> yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, it was cool. And then, um, you know, you said about that you played Electric Picnic twice as well at this stage. Um, we played it. I think I've been to about four or five. We played at one mm-hmm. three years ago. Yeah. We played at the one three years ago, and we played at the one just gone. So what was so it like three years two. ago? Was it not as good? Because you, you said that you said that this year's one was super. Like so, what was the it like one? The um, it was good. Uh, we were playing in the, both the same places. Um, mm. The we we got a gig from a guy up in Mullingar called Marty Mulligan, who's an absolute legend. Um, he runs a stage in the spoken word area Mm -hmm. so we were playing on that stage um, both electric picnics Mm -hmm. in a row and uh, another place Natasha's Cafe that's like a healthy food place they got all raw food delicious um, (coughs) all the snacks and all that Mm -hmm. and they have music on for the whole uh, weekend there as well so we played but just both those stages both times Uh, I think there was a a bigger crowd and we probably sound a bit better at the most okay. recent one you know what I mean but uh, not that the first one was a bad crack like mm-hmm. it was it wasn't did you get to see any of the bigger acts this year you know like the main main stage acts um yeah I can't remember what I've seen uh, seen Sheik and Noel Rogers um, oh, that's kind of cool I was kind of just going around seeing a lot of random stuff like um, I'd be more interested to see the smaller stuff you know yeah, I, I think yeah, like yeah. the well, unless there's someone you just absolutely have to see. Yeah. I've seen Kendrick Lamar for a little bit. That was that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you know, you'd be already out of hearing of them. Like I'd be more interested in something I've never heard yeah, before. Heard you know, that's uh, mm-hmm. you know, you can find a new uh, Irish uh, artist. Like, I actually saw a Waterford band for the first time I'd ever seen. Chew the scenery. You ever hear Chew the scenery? No. No, oh, brilliant nice. band. They're heavy. Heavier kind of uh, grungy. Mm. Um, I saw them up at Electric Pink, and I'd never seen them in Waterford. You know, so that was mm. mad. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, that was at Natasha's cafe as well. Mm. That was really good. And so, can you tell us a little bit about uh, touring Germany? How did that come about? Um, that was just um, it's a it's a local ski um destination. It's just a, a like a skiing village that a lot of uh, people from Tremor and Waterford uh, go over to regularly. Like it's a it's a very uh, a very well frequented place, you know. Mm. Uh, Garmisch, that's the name of it. Garmisch Park and Kirk in South Germany. It's um yeah, they just have an Irish pub over there. They were always having Irish music there. They'd have like uh like um Irish acts that are going all around the world if they're in that part of Germany, like, you know, mm. the Irish pub is actually like the main pub there it's like the the, the best pub mm. in the area really yeah. so uh we were playing over there on saint patrick's day um i think it was two years in a row um and when we were over there then we we played a few times um the, the days before and the days after mm. and they were going up skiing during the day it was really really good crack mm. um yeah i i don't know how it came about uh chez um just got through to them Mm. Said, uh, can we have a gig? And she said, yeah, no bother. <laughs> um, and uh, the second time, actually, well, I think both times, they, they have a, over the Irish pub, they have a, a little apartment. Right. Uh, and I stayed in the, the second time we were over. Mm. It was lovely. Like, it's just a really nice community over there. Mm. Um, really nice little kind of quiet. Mm. Um, 
but there's like you know but it'd be mad in the Irish pub on St. Right. Patrick's Day obviously that's the biggest uh, the biggest Irish celebration <coughs> of the year like so right. all the Irish pubs are going to be um, you know a bit more wild mm. um, yeah we played uh, played some mad old gigs in there like yeah. really just up full volume like the whole it's pretty good to say been on tour yeah, it is a, it's it's a good, good feel, all right, yeah. yeah. Um, haven't done um, much. We've we done a mad uh, little tour of West Cork uh, when there was the Valley the Hog Jazz Festival on. Mm-hmm. We had a few different gigs down there. West Cork has a great scene. like They have a really mm-hmm. good uh, music. So we did a little mini Cork tour as well, mm-hmm. a little Germany tour. Yeah, it's good. So with the, with the music or with the band, is your aim to have a number one hit is your aim to have a well-selling album is your aim just to keep producing what do you have a goal they, they would be they would be some of the goals dreams definitely um i just like um i like the direction it's going in the momentum it's going i like uh uh having a platform to play the music i want to play mm-hmm. um and for it to be received well you know so for for that to just continue to grow is is my only uh aspiration, you know, to mm-hmm. just uh to just continue doing that. Would you like to um, just focus on Ireland, or would you like to get? <clears throat> um. Say we offer you a tour in San Diego, would you take it? Now? Uh, I reckon I would. Yeah, I think you would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. Uh, you know, yeah, you're on the internet. You can have. Uh, it, it is definitely a lot easier in mm-hmm. the age of technology. You know, people in San Diego can just hear us. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. you know, and um. If, if, it, if it was arrangeable, you know, then if there's enough people that liked it there, you could go and do a gig over there. Like, it's uh, it's good in that sense. Mm. Um, this is skipping back a good few questions, but maybe it actually is a, a I'm not going to say a golden age in music in terms of quality, but mm. in terms of opportunity, it actually probably is because, mm. like, there's, there's, there's people going to like your stuff uh, if you, let's say, if we... If we didn't have a very big following in Ireland, like mm-hmm. if our if our music wasn't doing so well, because it was just kind of funky music, it doesn't sound like the radio music you hear here. Yeah, yeah. Um, there may be other parts of the world that enjoy that a bit more, like you know, uh, I reckon uh, South America they like to get down, like they like to kind of uh, get groovy. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I'd love to go there. I think that'll be that'll be a goal of mine. Play a bit of music over in South America. Mm. I think there's also fun. we have uh, we have more viewers from the American area than we do here. Mm. Yeah, it's more surprising. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Very interesting. More viewers in Dublin mm. than we do in Waterford. Yeah. Yeah. More viewers in America than we do in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't think it like, but do you know where you're? That's, that's good. That's good. Do you know where most of your people are listening from? Is it local or is it further away? Um, I'm actually not sure. I don't. Uh, I don't really monitor that. Um, I'm just only in Waterford, so I'm. I'm only like playing directly to people in Waterford. Mm. Uh, whoever's listening, uh, should they could be either. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. not sure. Um, I did. Uh, uh, was showing me on Spotify. You know, you can have like you can see where you're getting listens from in different places. Right. You know, it was spread out. There's people listening in other countries. You know. Uh, given a few plays, I think we have a uh, a good few friends over in Canada. Like mm. that, be listening. Um, I have family over in Canada. Mm. Uh, you know, you spread out. You know, all it takes is for someone to just send it. Mm. You can say, show my German friend this. Like if I, if I send my one per friend in Germany something, then they're listening in Germany. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Like um, you know, it's it's it's, it's easier than. Mm. Do you have any advice for? Uh, for aspiring musicians, young lads and young girls growing up that want to be like ourselves, maybe be in a band or go solo. Do you have any yeah. advice to get yourself out there? You know? mm. uh, good question, I'd say just keep playing every day. Mm. Uh, always be yourself, whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you're setting out to do, be about that. Uh, understand yourself, understand uh, why it is you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, what your intentions are and set your intentions out real clear to yourself you know if you want to be a 
if you want to be a goth rocker, say yeah. I want to be a goth rocker, you know? Yeah. I'm going out, I'm going getting all the, <laughs> the stuff I need, making sure everyone knows that that's what I'm about. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, um, I think practice every day is just essential. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, every single day, like, mm. um, even if it's just one or two minutes. Yeah. You know, I'm doing a song a day for this whole year. For 2019, I said I'll do it for the crack, but it's just going to be like a one minute song. So How are you getting it. on so far? Oh, yeah, great. Great, yeah. yeah it's just you're planning on putting it's on, it's only or... five minutes long so far. Like. Oh, on... yeah, I throw it up every day, like, yeah. just on the Instagram. On the, one, yeah. um, <laughs> just on the Instagram, so Facebook, goals, Instagram, or whatever. Yeah, well, that's like, so I'm at least having a, a minimum of one minute. Yeah. Because you know, it'd just be a one minute video. Mm. Um, like, so it's a it's nice to know then that I'll have that every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and kind of do different styles like that. But um, you have to be you have to be <laughs> doing something every day. You know, you have to be. I think. Okay, maybe there's there's more people that get success with just uh, sticking to the one style of music. But my favorite musicians, mm. uh, have a have an eclectic style mm. of, uh, of, of many different influences. Yeah. Uh, Hiatus Coyote, have you ever listened to them? No, I haven't. Yeah, no, they're a brilliant band. Uh, they'd have a, a multitude of influences. Mm. Uh, Sublime from the 90s, uh, mm. really great band. They'd have uh, so many, you'd hear so many different things yeah. in that one band. Um, so I personally would say a good thing to do is to expose yourself to as many different types of music and see what you like and see what you don't like and see what influences you know and draw influence from yeah, everything yeah, yeah, yeah. um but others may think you know if you want to be a classical violinist you know just stick to that classical music yeah, you know yeah. don't bog yourself down with uh with nonsense with grime <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stick to um stick to what you're doing you know um but uh yeah i think the best thing like uh People are really focused on having an online presence, you know. Mm, yeah. We're uh, we're online as it uh, as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> like it's important to connect with people in real life. Yeah. Um, to uh, you know, if you want people to, everyone, everyone wants people to like them. You know, yeah. but in terms of your know, musicians starting yeah. out, if you want people to dig your music, you gotta actually play it for them. You gotta let them see you playing and see you enjoying it. Yeah. Say, okay, they love their music. We we wanna love their music. You know what I mean? Like I think you, you gotta I get you. you know, the only people that are that are flying along in what they're doing, they love what they're doing. Yeah. They absolutely love what they're doing and it's clear by looking at them that they love what they're doing. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's absolutely no strain for them. I think yeah. like if it's mm. if uh, if you see someone that's um you know, just that they're that they're struggling or what they're at, like you're kind of thinking, uh, maybe that's not for them. Your first instinct is going to think, oh, uh, they're they're kind of doing the wrong thing mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. They're doing something that's not suiting them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And you said you were. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, when you just said that, you know, the, instead of having an online presence and connecting to more people in person. Yeah. How would you, like, think we should communicate more effectively? Cause like that seems to be an issue nowadays, right? Mm. Do you know, say we're us four down in the pub, you know, I yeah. can guarantee that two or three of us would be on our phones. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm, true. So there seems to be like a lack of communication among people in our generation. Yeah, that's true, and that rhymes. We'll sample that out later. <laughs> lack of communication among people in our generation. <laughs> He's practicing grind. That's good. Bro. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, that's uh, that's really good. There is man. Uh, it's undeniable. Um, if there's a real, um, I was only watching an episode of The Simpsons about it. There, Lisa. Uh, it's a good one, a new one. Lisa is like after inventing Facebook. Everyone's glued onto their phones, right? And she's like, she has a thousand friends, um, and uh, she's just there, like, okay, so I have a thousand friends. I go out and meet everyone, like you know, and hang out with them. And they're all just glued to their phones, like. Mm. So that are they really your friend at all? Like, yeah, you know, course, yeah. I think um, how do we connect? It's a good question, man. Uh, let me ask you the same. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, we can start with putting the phones down. Yeah, you start with putting the phones down, definitely. Because the most times I help myself and I, I just see people on the phone. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> just like living the moment, man. I think people of our generation can communicate because we didn't grow up with all the technology that we have now. But yeah. I think the kids growing up now, you know, they're, they're going to struggle. They are going to really struggle because they... are literally bored with life. What are you yeah. going to do, you exactly, know? Yeah. What are you going to do? Like, they don't... They, they don't... Uh, yeah, seems like they can't see a world where there wasn't that. Like, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. Like I saw, um, mm. I think Ryan Turberley said that his daughter he was showing her like a clip on the newspaper, mm. and she tried to like zoom in, you know, oh, like you do on an iPhone. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah, whether yeah. to laugh or cry at that. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think you have to laugh or you'll end up crying. Like. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, the phone thing is like I be on my phone. I I tried to tailor what I'm on to be. Um, only positive stuff and only stuff that's going to okay put it this way like we understand enough about technology to understand like the the algorithms that's going on in your phone that they're trying to show you what you want to see yeah. so you can tailor this to to show you positive things and uplifting things that are going to remain with you when you're not on your phone anymore mm. so let's say if it's like uh inspirational memes man like they get me like you know they, they get me every time like you know just mm. some some something that's like be your best self today or whatever mm. I'm like yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> give that a like but then like if that's all that's coming up then when you're away from your phone all that's going to be going through your head is that you know yeah, yeah. if you're if you're on there and it's all like uh all little zan and stuff like that mm. then your head is going to be like people really are underestimating how much their phone is affecting their thoughts. Like what what yeah, they're what they're videos. viewing, what they're consuming is affecting them. Like it's like you are what you eat. Like you are what you watch as well. Like yeah. you are yeah. what you uh, what you consume uh, from technology. Mm-hmm. What you listen to, uh, what articles you're reading, uh, you know, uh, what posts, what pages you're liking, what people you're following. Like these are all going to. Uh, these are all going to impact your thoughts. These are all going to actually impact your consciousness. Do you know? So I think uh, you got to be careful with what that is. I, I was never careful with what that was when I was, when I first got a smartphone. Do you know, I was like, uh, the internet has so much on it. Like, I, wanna, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to see all the, all the mad stuff that it has. Like, mm. Do you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't watching what I was consuming. Do you get me? Like, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't being careful or being conscious of what I was consuming as I am now yeah. and I don't think I don't think many people are I think they're just kind of glued into it like it's very strange uh, you see uh, just just the most meaningless of of, yeah, of, of topics yeah. like uh, that's back and forth and that's pretty much like that's the first thing a lot of people see when they wake up yeah. and when they go to sleep so exactly. it's like yeah. what's actually going on in their heads like what's actually going on in their lives <laughs> Do you know, yeah. if that's all that's going on on their phones yeah. and all they're doing is going on their phones. Mm. You know I think the mean? media does spread a lot of negativity. Like we were talking earlier about, about like people wanting Father Christmas to be renamed like Person Christmas. I don't think there's actually that many people actually calling for that, but the likes of Lad Bible and all that. That's it. It's like that making a story and drag it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making a big, big, making a big kind yeah, of. There's uh, one person posting that stuff. Like there was one story I thought was really ridiculous. Like people were calling for Manchester to be renamed Person Chester. Right. Ah, and that's a joke. Of course, man. Lad Bible. Well, of course, Lad Bible. Like, like, that's like one for whispers or something. Yeah, like, that like, has to it be. It had to be. Like, that has to be parody. Like I think though, like. Like yeah, like really? Father Christmas didn't just like F- Father Christmas is not a it's not like a a a, a, a patriarchal infliction on on yeah, today's not, world. Like, it derived from uh, Saint Nicholas yeah. who identified as a male. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like, why do we why are we why are we changing the genders of the dead? You yeah. know what I mean? Okay. Father Christmas, Santa. Uh, maybe we can't say he's fictional for any kids watching. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Who knows? Just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just crushed their Christmas. <laughs> yeah, well, look. Like Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Seven is borderline, he said. Yeah. What did he say? He was, oh. he was talking to this kid on the phone. He was like, do we still believe in, in Santa? Because you know, seven is still borderline. He's seven years old. Do you still borderline. believe? Like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just mental. He just crushed that fucking kid's dreams, though. 
I should have been happy, man. You may have crushed some of our, <laughs> you may have crushed some of our viewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Um, quick question for you. Uh, going back to the music again. So, do you think that in terms of the future of the band, could you ever see yourself going solo? Because we've had so many groups in the past that have had the split ups, boy bands, girl bands, the whole lot. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself doing solo stuff? Um, I think. Uh, Cause you do a little bit of it now, right? Yeah, I'm already doing a lot. Um, mm. but like I, I think, I I'll always be doing both. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I I contribute to the Back Road Smokers Club. I contribute to other groups, and that's my little contribution to that. And then I also have my own work. Mm. That's uh, that's sort of, just me. You mm. know, um, and it's always been like that because I was writing songs since before I joined the band, mm. um, and and playing music here and there, uh. So, like my musical career on a personal level has mm. gotten bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, has has uh, grown. Uh, a bit along with uh, the Back Road Smokers Club mm -hmm. so they kind of they go hand in hand they don't really they don't conflict each other you know mm -hmm. um, they they normally uh, work uh, they work in favour of each other really mm -hmm. you know because uh, like uh, people sort of if, I, if I'm playing my own music um, people that follow the Back Road Smokers Club kind of might already yeah. recognise me yeah. Uh, although I may be playing the bass in that mm -hmm. band and be the playing doubles. guitar or something uh, on my own, mm -hmm. playing I like playing the guitar, piano, uh, singing a bit mm -hmm. and um, have some some new hip hop mm -hmm. uh, coming out as well here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, I just like kind of trying new things, you know, um, like uh, just having fun uh, with it mm -hmm. uh, with different sounds. I uh, had a saxophone, uh, I'm not very good at it, but uh, I have a saxophone that uh, I like to have a little go of. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't be playing it uh, live uh, yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. But um, maybe down the line, I think I, I'd like that would be a good crack. Um, I'd like to see Back Old Smokers Club play with more uh, brass. Mm. That's one thing we really want to kind of get in some more brass players. Mm -hmm. So if you guys know anybody or mm -hmm. there's anybody <laughs> out there. <laughs> that I want to play some trumpet or some saxophone. Mm -hmm. um, like we, we, we love that sound that kind of suits the suits the, the the mood of what we're trying to create, you know? Mm -hmm. Fun atmosphere, uh, kind of uh, funky music. And for, for some of your fans at home who may be watching, um, who writes most of the songs in the band? Um, we all contribute. Uh, there's some songs that have been written uh, all the lyrics may have been just by Chez and then the music may have been that collaboration between me and Killian mm. then there, there's there's ones Illusions for instance was uh, it's it's just a bass line by me and the 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 bones of the lyrics are by Freddie and it's like he may have a, a long verse and we all go through it together as a band and say one or two <coughs> things um we like uh, writing like uh, writing something that seems quite normal in quite common language and just changing words for sort of more eccentric or strange words, mm -hmm. uh, bringing in uh, uh, unexpected characters, um, uh, even like historical characters and stuff like that. The new song Be Good has mm -hmm. like Little Bo Peep is in there, um, the Greek... Uh, mythological legend Atlas is in there. There's a lot of, um, you know, just kind of obscure, um, wacky stuff in there. We all play a part in that. We all contribute to that. Mm -hmm. uh, getting on with it was written. Uh, the lyrics were written by Killian Brown, and uh, I provided the music. Mm -hmm. uh, we we. He he showed me the lyrics on a page, and me and him were together with the guitar and piano and kind of constructed a, a melody from the words that were written which is different from how I normally approach songwriting uh, normally the music will come first and an idea of a melody will come and it's like fitting that slot of um, whatever the melody is seeing what word will fit in there. Mm. Uh, and, and some people it happens on the page first you know I, I love uh, I love working like that if uh, 
if whoever if, if any of the lads have written uh, something on a page from just reading it off the page then it could sound like this kind of song or it could sound like a completely different kind of song mm-hmm. you know off uh, off just lyrics written on a page um whereas my my writing style would be more like mm-hmm. uh, music first then lyrics and do you have a favorite back road smokers club song i think my my favorite for a long time was uh that's what's going on mm-hmm. that was one of the uh, earliest ones that yeah. was maybe like the third ever song um that was always my favorite i think it's just the most enjoyable to play uh, we always play it first uh since it's the oldest it's like it's it's, it's one of the ones we know the best yeah. mm-hmm. so we we're kind of um you know we're we're after coming the farthest way with that with the older songs you get of course yeah the, the, the rats, newer yeah. songs but some of the newer songs as well i think will will surpass that will 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 have a new favor out of the newer ones that we have mm-hmm. um you see they don't really have names yet so right it's not like i'm holding out on uh on what they're called they're actually just not called anything <laughs> yeah, you know? any names they're yet. just little grooves there's a little uh a little G minor groove. Mm. When, when I I will remind you. Of it, well, I say mm. <laughs> when when it's a song yeah. that's that's out. I say this is what I'm talking about. The <laughs> one in G minor. Mm. Um, there's a really nice kind of one that almost sounds like a slow, uh, Tin Tin Lizzy kind of song, like a Phil Lynott okay. sort of song, um, which is quite which is quite different from our style. Like, mm. um, I think that'll be my new favorite when that's okay. finished. So that would probably be. So you'll be here for something to look forward. I'd say you'll hear it in the next year. You'll okay. probably be here in the next year. It won't be that long of a wait, like. Mm. Um, yeah, they'd be some of my favorites. What mm. what what are your what's your favorite? It's Cleopatra. Is it? Mm. Nice. What do you like about it? It's just it stands out that it's there's no song similar to it to me. Really, it's its own thing. That's cool. That's the, that's my favorite. Yeah, I think I think Cleopatra is a little bit different from the others because it's 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 not as funky. Mm. It's more of like a, uh, it's more of a rocking song. Like mm. it's more of a kind of, uh, like some of them are just slower kind of grooves. There's a sort of a, a funky bass line that's more of a mm. an up tempo, just kind of rocking along. I think it'd be a good driving song. Have you ever have good, you good car song? Have like you ever performed uh, one one night when you were playing somewhere? We were thinking of requesting it. We didn't know. But have you ever played your song? Um, the world needs more people like you. Yeah. Like in front of people in an audience. That would actually be uh, yeah. my favorite. Yeah, I would say that's up Is there too. Really, that's what uh, came to my head. Yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard we, you play that in the Vic before. We don't. Uh, we don't play it uh, as the Back Road Smokers Club anymore. Uh, I originally wrote the song. It, it just features me, Killian, and uh, Sean Carey, a local bassist, mm. the only other lefty bassist that I know. Okay. <laughs> um, so that was just a, a song that I wrote that the recording came together from me, uh, Killian, and Sean. Mm. So we don't really recreate that as the Back Road Smokers Club oh. band setting. But I have played it, the last time I played it live was probably only last Thursday. Like if I'm doing a solo gig, I'll You'll always play it. Play it. Yeah. Um, I played it in the Theatre Royal with, uh, I was playing with Mike Fox and Killian Brown. Yeah, we just Mike got Fox. a little assembly, assembly together um, for for the sake of that gig like, mm. um, and arranged that song. So that was good. A lot of people knew it. Like yeah. they, they knew it from the back of Smokers Club recording. Yeah. See, we kind of just um, we threw it up as a uh, back of Smokers Club recording. I never threw it up as uh, my own solo recording, yeah. and it's down now because we took them all down. Um, so I might. Uh, I don't know when I re-upload that exact one, but I think in the future I'll re-upload. Um, mm. Like uh, maybe just uh, get together. Get together with the same lads again, or uh, with do, sorry, with do something different with it maybe, um, but uh, get it back out there like, yeah. mm. um, not as a background smokers club song. Do you get me? Because yeah. I think there was kind of a bit of confusion as to, um, why we never played it. Yeah, I always mean? wondered. Yeah, 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 it was kind of so. I had it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, like I, I still continue to play it. Mm. Do you kind of take that as like it's your own? It's your song, yeah. Yeah, it's more so. Um, your own project, basically. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, it didn't really suit the uh, the mood of what a backroads Romans Club game yeah. is uh, meant to be like. Right. Um, 
That's more of a just a, a laid back. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a laid back song. <coughs> that's why it'd be what, probably my favorite as well. It's yeah. just different. It's a different sound to what you normally yeah. make. Yeah, yeah. and even like like laid back by back old smokers club standards is is a lot less laid back than that. Mm. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like, um, yeah, back old smokers club is just a different sound. Like you know, you kind of got to uh, got a sort of just sort of call things what they are put things where they should be like you know yeah, so yeah. it didn't really like we we did uh, do it live and it just didn't work you know it was yeah, always a, a lull in the set like it was yeah. a, a bit that was um didn't fit because mm. it, it, it was to fit in somewhere else like it was to mm. fit into my sort of slower set when i'm doing like a jazz set or whatever yeah i have i have a couple of questions more for you about the band before i hand over to the lads ask yeah. more questions but my yeah. question just solely on the band uh, trying to get to know you as a band um, yeah. who would be most likely to get lost in the city if you had to pick somebody uh, from the band yeah. who would be most likely to get lost the one I would have to say would be Killian Brown Killian you think yeah mm. I think uh, Freddie has a good sense of navigation uh, if, if, if we were to put it in uh, if we were to put it in order mm. my take would be that uh, Freddie uh, Freddie would have the strongest sense of navigation okay. followed by uh, oh, Ch- ranking them okay. yeah yeah <laughs> Chase Ch- Ch- and Connor are tied second yeah uh, followed by me yeah uh, followed by all other um, uh, musicians we've ever played with and, yeah. and then Kelly. Dan Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who no I'm only joking he's after getting better now since he's joining but uh, uh. he used to not know how to get like from Don Hill because he had <laughs> and he lived in Don Hill like, <laughs> who uh, would be most likely to throw a spontaneous party uh, I'd say myself or Chez like we know what Chez, Chez when he Chez when he'd be off uh, when he's off work mm-hmm. but um my work is music, you know, so mm. um, I'm kind of uh, off at different times, like uh, most likely to throw a party. I don't know, uh, like uh, I, I, I'd like to think we were all uh, good party throwers. Mm-hmm. Uh, haven't been to a back house smokers club party in a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope we're invited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll have, uh, that, yeah. When Freddie gets back, we're just going to be having huge ones. Good. You know? Let us we're know. We're just going to... Like, um, yeah, we'll just make it happen, mm. you know. Who would be most likely to earn a million euros? Um, probably that's a tough one. I'd say, I'd say Connor Walsh, no, Connor or Chez. Mm. Uh, they'd be, uh, they'd be the cleverest of money. Mm. Who would be most likely to arrive to practice late? Uh, none of us are great for it. I used to be the worst, uh, and then the, <laughs> the last few times, uh, I, I've actually been good, so I love the, I could be honest, you know, mm. you, you, you never know who, who like, who's going to arrive in one order. Like. Mm. And most likely, <laughs> most likely uh, last one as well then, who's most likely to be hung over uh, going to a gig? Um, not really any of us, uh, no. much so anymore, like uh, we, we, in the past we, we did some fairly drunken gigs, some fairly hung over gigs. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we did gigs in all sorts of conditions mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, 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 and each at different levels yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of uh, way of being <laughs> but um, I think yeah none of us really so much anymore we're not into that we just like to have a fresh head like the, the music is the um, the music is the buzz you, get me? Mm. you don't need to really be getting a buzz off that now so like, mm-hmm. the music just is uh, that it, like I I'm only there for the crack of playing, like you mm. know, uh, it like it'd be fairly unlikely that I'd be uh, like if, if I was out drinking or something mm. on a Friday and then we had a gig on a Saturday, like I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't really You'd see that happen. Mm-hmm. And if you if you do make it to this you know huge level that we hope you do, and there was a movie, who would you want to play you in that movie? If it was a back old smokers club movie. That's a really good question, man. Who would I have playing me? Uh, mm. Like, uh, probably have, we'd all play each other. No, like, let's say you're dead. Who would you, who would you pick? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know, Will Smith or something? Cooper Gooding Jr.? <laughs> I'm planning on, uh, not dying for ages. So yeah, maybe, of course, of Maybe course. it's someone, if it was somebody in the future playing my young self, 
Yeah. It, it may be a, a, an up and coming actor that's not born. Okay, let's say somebody today then. If we have to pick somebody today. <laughs> okay, we have to pick someone yeah. today. Okay, so if I die today. Well, well let, no, let's not assume you're dead. Let's not assume you're dead. Just, okay, just, okay, just, okay, just, just you're not. Just in the you. Movie. You're not in the movie. Who's gonna play? Okay, you? okay, okay. Um, your man who played the. Uh, I'm gonna say someone out of Skins. I was gonna say like Tony out of Skins. Tony from Skins. Yeah, yeah. Nicholas uh, Holt, <laughs> I think is his name or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tony from it. Skins. Nick, what about Nicholas Cage? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I wouldn't rate him. Just throwing around the Nicholas was there. Yeah. Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas, right? Yeah, I might have. I might have Saint Nicholas playing. Yeah, see on the gender though. Yeah, well, playing my gender fluid self. Like, okay. I, w- I wouldn't want my my gender to be, uh, like. Disclosed in in the movie, you know what I mean. Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy Schumer, <laughs> yeah, <fine. laughs> yeah, I don't know man, who would have. That's a funny question, though. Mm. Maybe you need more time to think about it. Yeah, mm. sure, we'll see. Like, if one comes out, yeah. who's playing we'll me see. in the movie? We'll see. Who 